OK, we're going to have a quick look at how to design a graphic in Motion 5 software and publish the elements as a generator or plugin in uh, Final Cut Pro 10. So let's have a quick look at this graphic that we've designed as a driver profile in the Motorsport program that I'm doing at the moment. This is uh, how it comes in. Got a picture, uh, title of the class, driver's name and other information, then it disappears. So what we're going to do is have a look at how you can take a graphic that you design in Motion 5 and publish it to Final Cut Pro as a generator or a plugin, if you will. So you select the picture, we've selected that under layers, and then in the inspector here under image, you can see you click or tick the drop zone box. Now that is what will allow you ultimately to change the picture when you're in Final Cut Pro without having to come back into motion. It's a massive time saver. Now this, you can see this uh, under the pan, you've got X, Y. Now you want to retain that. So you want to publish that. So right click the X. And now I've already published it. So here it says unpublished. So I'll leave that as it is. But you normally you would right click the X, click publish and then right click the Y and click publish and under scale you probably want to publish the scale so you can change the size of the picture if you want to at some point in the future and then we go to the text now under the text you've got uh, in this part we've got uh, the KZ1 gearbox that's the title of the class and you can see under there it says enabling FCP so you want to make sure that all the text boxes that you've got that you might want to change that you tick the checkbox that says enable in FCP. And in this graphic, we've got um, text boxes for the, the class. In this case, it's KZ1 gearbox, the name, cart number, and the information. Now, we've also got a couple of logos, the sponsor's logo at the bottom. And again, same sort of thing, just in case the sponsor changes or their logo changes, you want to make sure that you click drop zone so that at some point in the future, you can change that if you want to. Right click pan, publish that, right click uh, scale, publish that. Um, any parameter that you want to publish that you might possibly change, you always right click the parameter and then click on publish. And then in Final Cut Pro, you'll be able to uh, publish that, particularly a text item on screen in Final Cut Pro. Massive, massive time saver, really is. So uh, the Super One logo in this case, that's a series and again in case the logo ever changes we'll publish that and again we can make easy changes to the to it uh, if we need to now once you've got all the parameters set uh, and everything's uh, saved out as you might want it to you'd normally come under here and go file publish and it will publish to Final Cut Pro as a generator but in this case I've already done that so what I need to do is just save it so I'm going to save this and then we'll catch up with it once it's saved in Final Cut Pro. OK, we've come over to Final Cut Pro. Now, this is the race. Now, the cart here, number five, that's the driver that we want to publish a driver profile for in this case. So you've got the leader of the race uh, is Kian Jewish driving the one cart. On the five cart, it's Mark Kimber. So I'm, I've decided as an editor, I'm, I just want to drop in a uh, little driver profile there just to give some information about the driver in second place so on the right hand side you select you've saved out uh, to Final Cut Pro you select the graphic this is the graphic as we've seen before now it's obviously not Jamie Garvey this he's a gearbox driver we're looking for Mark Kimber who's a, a cadet in this Honda cadet class now you can see here on the right hand side you can see these drop zones so we're going to ignore the two logo drop zones but here's the the photo drop zone so we select that now I'm looking for the driver so I've got all my drivers on the left hand side of the, of the screen that we uh, took pictures of at the beginning of the season and we're looking for this one it's Mark Kimber so we select Mark and then apply clip and then hey presto Mark appears now here's the the time saving thing now in the old days you used to have to go out to uh, f uh, motion it, when it was motion four and change all these parameters render it out and bring it back in now we can do it on screen in final cut pro 10 this is 10.1.2 the version so i've already changed you know you just click on the information you want to change honda change the uh, kz1 gearbox to honda cadet jamie garvey to mark kimber I've changed the cart number to five 
Uh, Mark lives in Solihull, so we'll change that. And then the information below, we're going to change that. We'll put uh, his team in, which is BRK, and uh, some information. So there's BRK. And now we'll just add some little information. And uh, he won this race in Honda Cadet last year. It was the only time he's ever won in Super 1. But uh, he's looking to take back-to-back -back wins. So we'll just type in uh, winner in S1 at Lark Hall, which is this circuit, in 2013. And then uh, we'll move this uh, to the left slightly. You Now you can select all the text and uh, go up to the... Uh, text tab and you can select scale and scale it so you can uh, reduce the size of the text so you can either type in or move the slider whichever you prefer so you can make the text a bit smaller if you need to uh, or alternatively in this case we've got some space off to the uh, we've actually tabbed it in slightly so in order to get that to line up a little bit better click on the left hand side delete and delete one more time and uh, that looks about right. So once that graphic has then rendered out, which it has now, and you've placed it in in place over the uh, information, this is this is how it looks. And uh, I can then take that graphic and change it uh, very very easily in Final Cut Pro without having to go back into Motion. It's a, it's a fantastic time saver. It's a great thing. I've been using Final Cut Pro 7 for years. I've been a holdout for version 10, but not anymore. For this alone, it is worth the upgrade.